Section 35 of Young Folks Bible by Josephine Pollard. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 15 The Feast of the Passover, The Supper at Bethany. Now the great feast of the Passover was near, and a great crowd of Jews went up to Jerusalem to keep it. It had been kept since the days of Moses when God smote the firstborn of Egypt and passed over the homes of the Jews. And those who were on the watch for Jesus to do him harm said, as they stood in the church, What think ye? Will he not come to the feast? For the chief priests and Pharisees had sent out word that those who knew where Jesus was should make it known that they might take him. Now, six days before the great feast, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom he had raised from the dead. Some of the Jews knew that he was there, and they came not so much to see Jesus as to see Lazarus. And the chief priests sought for a way to put Lazarus to death, as some of the Jews, when they saw him, had faith in Jesus, and gave their hearts to him. Jesus left Bethany to go to Jerusalem, and on the way the mother of Zebedee's children came to Jesus and begged that he would do one thing for her. Jesus said to her, What wilt thou? She said to him, Grant that these my two sons may sit the one on the right hand and the other on thy left in thy kingdom. Jesus said, Ye know not what ye ask. Can ye drink of the cup that I drink of, and bear all that I shall have to bear? They said, We can. Jesus said, Ye shall drink of the cup and bear the cross, but to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but God gives it to those who are fit for it. When the ten heard this, they were wroth with James and John. But Jesus told them, that those who sought to rule would be made to serve, and that he himself came not to be served by men, but to lay down his life for them. And when they came to the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of the twelve and said to them, Go to the small town which is near you, and you shall find there a colt tied on which no man has rode. Loose him and bring him to me, and if you should be asked, Why do ye this? Say that the Lord hath need of him, and he will be sent at once. The men did as Jesus told them, and brought the young ass, and put their robes on his back, and Jesus sat on him. And as he went out on the road, the crowds on their way to the feast spread their robes before him, and strewed the way with green boughs from the palm trees. And they waved palms in their hands, and made the air ring with shouts of, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! This was the way in which they used to meet and greet their kings, and they thought to please Jesus so that he would pay them back when he set up his throne on earth for the most of them did not love him in their hearts. As Jesus came near to Jerusalem, he looked at it and wept when he thought of the grief that the Jews were to know. And he taught each day in the church at Jerusalem, but at night he went to Bethany to sleep. One morn, as he was on his way back to Jerusalem, he saw a fig tree by the roadside, and went to it to pluck some of the fruit. But he found on it naught but leaves. Then he said to it, Let no more figs grow on this tree. The next day, when the twelve went by, they saw that the fig tree was dried up from its roots. And they thought of the words that Jesus spoke, and said, How soon has the fig tree dried up? Jesus told them, that they might do as much and more than he had done to the fig tree, if they had faith in God and sought strength from him. Then he spoke to them in this way. There was a rich man who laid out a vineyard, 
and dug a ditch round it to keep wild beasts and thieves away, and made a wine-press, and let the place out to men who were to give him part of the fruit. Then he went off to a far land. When the time had come for the fruit to be ripe, he sent one of his servants to the men who had charge of the vineyard, that he might bring back his share of the grapes. But the men took the servant and beat him, and sent him off with no fruit in his hands. Then the one who owned the place sent once more, and the bad men threw stones at this servant and hurt him so in the head that he was like to die. The next one they killed, and so things went on. Now the rich man who owned the place had but one son who was most dear to him. And he said, If I send my son to them, they will be kind to him and treat him well. But as soon as the bad men saw him, they said, This is the heir. Let us kill him, and all that is his shall be ours. And they took him and put him to death and cast him out of the vineyard. The vineyard is the world. The one who owns it is God. The bad men are the Jews. He had taught them his laws, and they had vowed to keep them. When they did not do it, God sent priests and wise men to try and make them do what was right. These were stoned, and not a few were slain. At last he sent his own dear son, Jesus. Now they meant to kill him, as the bad men had killed the heir of the vineyard. When the Jews heard this talk, they knew that Jesus spoke of them, and they were wroth with him and in haste to kill him. One day, on his way out of the temple, Jesus sat down near the box in which money was put for the use of the church, and he saw that the rich put in large sums. And there came a poor widow who threw in two mites, which make a farthing, or the fourth of a penny. Jesus said to the twelve, This poor widow has cast in more than all the rest, for they had so much they did not miss what they gave, while she, who was poor and in want, did cast in all that she had. End of section 35、Section、36 Chapter 16, Parables A parable is a story of something in real life that will fix in our minds and hearts the truth it is meant to teach. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven was like the master of a house who went out at morn to hire men to work in his vineyard. The price was fixed at a penny a day, and those who would work for that were sent out to the vineyard. At nine o'clock in the day, he went out and saw men in the market place who were out of work, and he said to them, Go ye to the vineyard, and I will pay you what is right. And they went their way. He went out at noon, and at three o'clock, and found more men whom he sent to work in his vineyard. Later in the day, when it was near six o'clock, he went out and saw more men, to whom he said, Why stand ye here all the day idle? They said to him, Because no man has hired us. He said, Go ye into the vineyard, and what is right I will give thee. So when night came, the lord of the vineyard had the workmen called in, and each one was paid a penny. When the first came, they thought they should have more, and when they were paid but a penny, they found fault, and said, These last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast paid them the same as us who have borne the toil and heat of the day. The master said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst thou not say thou wouldst work for me for a penny a day? Take what is thine, and go thy way. 
for I have a right to do as I will with mine own. And the last shall be first, and the first last. Jesus told them a parable of ten maids who went out to meet the bridegroom. For in those days the man who was wed brought his bride home at night, and some of his friends used to go out to meet him. These ten maids had lit their lamps and gone out to meet the bridegroom. But he did not come as soon as they thought he would, and as the hours went on they all fell asleep. Now five of these maids were wise, and five were not. The wise ones had brought oil with them, so that if their lamps should go out, they could fill them. Those who were not wise had no oil but that which was in their lamps. At midnight those who were on the watch cried out, Lo, the bridegroom comes, go ye out to meet him. And the five wise maids rose at once and went to work to trim their lamps. The five who were not wise stood by and said, Give us of your oil, for our lamps have gone out. But the wise ones said, Not so, for we have no more than we need. Go ye and buy of those who have oil to sell. And while they went out to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were in trim went in with him, and the door was shut. Then the five maids who had been out to buy oil came to the door and cried out, Lord, Lord, let us in. But he said, I do not know you, and would not let them in. The bridegroom means Jesus, who is to come at the last day. The ten maids are those who claim to love him and who set out to meet him on that day. The oil is the love in our hearts, which burns and keeps our faith bright. We are to watch and wait for him, for we know not the day nor the hour when he will come. Jesus came to the town of Bethany, and they made a supper for him there. In those days they did not sit at their meals on chairs as we do, but lay down on a couch or lounge as high as the table, so that they could rest on the left arm and have the right hand and arm free to use. Martha, Mary, and Lazarus were there, and while Jesus sat at meat, Mary came with a flask of rich oil that was worth a great price, and she broke the flask and poured the oil on the head of Jesus. And there were some there who found fault with this great waste, and Judas, one of the twelve, said that the oil might have been sold for a large sum and would have done the poor much good. Jesus said, Blame her not. She has done a good work on me. For the poor you have with you all the time, and you may do them good when you choose, but you will not have me always. Then Judas went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I bring you to the place where Jesus is, so that you may take him? They said they would pay him well, and from that time he was on the watch to catch Jesus alone. Jesus said, there was a rich man who wore fine clothes and had great feasts spread for him each day. And a beggar named Lazarus lay at his gate, full of sores, but the rich man gave him not so much as a crumb. And the dogs came and licked his sores. The beggar died and was borne by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man died and was laid in the ground and while in the pains of hell he raised his eyes and saw Abraham with Lazarus on his bosom, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for this flame torments me. But Abraham said, Son, thou in thy lifetime had thy good things, while Lazarus was poor and had a hard lot. Now he has ease from all his pains, and thou art in torments, 
and between us and you there is a great gulf. None can go from here to you, nor come from you to us. Then the rich man said, I pray thee, then, send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may speak to them, so that they come not to this place of torment. Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And the rich man said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went to them from the dead, they will turn from their sins. And he said to him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, they will not turn from their sins, though one rose from the dead. A steward is one who takes charge of a house or lands, pays bills, hires workmen, and is the master's right-hand man. Jesus said, There was a rich man who had a steward, and word was brought to him that this steward made a bad use of his master's wealth. So the rich man said to him, What is this that I hear of thee? Let me know how thou hast done thy work, if thou wouldst keep thy place. The steward said to himself, What shall I do if my Lord takes my place from me? I cannot dig, and am too proud to beg. I have made up my mind to do something that will put me on good terms with the rich, so that they will not close their doors to me should I lose my place here as steward. So he sent for all those who were in debt to his Lord. And he said to the first, How much dost thou owe? And he said, A hundred measures of oil. The steward said, Take thy bill, and sit down and write fifty. Then said he to the next one, How much dost thou owe? The man said, A hundred measures of wheat. The steward said to him, Take thy bill and write four score. And the Lord praised the unjust steward, for he thought he had done a wise thing. Jesus said we were to use our wealth so as to make friends who will take us in their homes, should we become poor. He that is faithful in small things is faithful also in large ones, and he that is unjust in the least is unjust in much more. No man can serve two masters. As Jesus drew near to Jerusalem, those who were with him thought that the kingdom he spoke of was close at hand. He said to them, A rich man had to go to a far land, so he called his ten servants that he might leave his goods in their charge. To the first one he gave five talents. A talent is a large sum in silver. To the next he gave two talents, and to the third one. And he said to them, Make a good use of these gifts till I come back, and then went on his way. Then he that had five talents went out and bought and sold and made five talents more. And the one that had two did the same. But he that had one dug a hole in the earth and hid the Lord's money. When the rich man came back, he sent for his servants that they might tell him what they had done while he was gone. So he that had five talents came and said, Lord, thou didst give me five talents, and see, I have gained five more. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he that had two talents came and said, Lord, thou didst give me two talents, and I have gained two more. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he who had but the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that thou wert a hard man, and didst reap where thou hast not sown, and gleaned 
where thou hast not strewn and for fear i should lose it i hid thy talent in the earth and here it is his lord said thou wicked and lazy servant if thou didst know me to be such a harsh man thou shouldst have lent my money to those who would pay for its use so that when i came back i should have my own and more with it take therefore the one talent from him and give it to him that hath ten talents for to him that hath much shall more be given but from him that hath not shall be taken away all that he hath and cast ye the useless servant into outer darkness where shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth christ meant to teach by this that we were to make use of the gifts or talents that god gave us and add to them as much as we could then when we die god will say to us well done and bid us share in the joy that our lord has in store for us if we have but one gift we must use that and serve god with it or at the last day he will take that from us and we shall have no part in the joy of our lord jesus said the good news is like a king who made a wedding feast for his son and he sent his servants to call in those who were bid to the feast but they would not come then he sent out more servants to urge them to come to the wedding but they made light of it and went their ways to their farms or shops and some fell on the king's servants and slew them when the king heard of this he was wroth and he said to his servants go ye out to the highways and bring into the wedding those ye find there and the servants did so and brought in both bad and good so there was no lack of guests at the wedding when the king came in to see the guests he saw there a man who had not on a wedding garment and he said to him friend why art thou here without a wedding garment and the man spoke not then said the king to the servants bind him hand and foot and take him off and cast him into outer darkness for many are called but few are chosen god is the king who made the feast for jesus christ his son to which all are bid the wedding garment we need is a true heart full of love to jesus the good news is for all yet those who think more of this world than they do of heaven christ does not choose for his own and they are lost jesus said the good news is like unto leaven or yeast which a woman took and hid in some meal till the whole of it was light end of section 36section 37 of young folks bible by josephine pollard this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter 17 the lord's supper jesus in gethsemane the judas kiss peter denies jesus now the day was come when the jews were to keep the feast of the passover to do this each man took a lamb to the church and killed it on the altar the priest would burn the fat but the rest of the lamb the man took home and it was cooked and he and his folks ate of it in the night the twelve came to jesus to ask him at what place they should set out their feast for they had no house or home of their own jesus sent forth two of them and said go ye to jerusalem and there shall you meet a man with a jug of water go to the house where he goes and say to the man who lives there the master bids thee show us the room where he shall come to eat the feast with his friends and he will show you a large room upstairs there spread the feast the men did as jesus told them 
and the man showed them the room, and there they spread the feast. And at night Jesus came with his twelve friends, and as they did eat, Jesus said, There is one here who will give me up to the Jews. These words made them all feel sad. Now there was one of the twelve of whom Jesus was most fond. His name was John, and as he lay with his head on Jesus' breast, he said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus said, It is he to whom I shall give the piece of bread I dip in the dish. And when he had dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas. And he said to him, What is in thy heart to do? Do at once. Now none of the rest knew why Jesus spoke thus. But as Judas had charge of the bag in which the money was kept, some of them thought that he bade him buy things they were in need of, or give something to the poor. Then Judas went out of the house where Jesus and his friends were, and it was night. And when he had gone, Jesus said to them, I shall be with you but a short time, but ere I go, a new law I give to you, the law of love. As I have loved you, so shall ye love each other. By this shall all men know that ye love me. Peter said, Lord, where dost thou go? Jesus said, Where I go, thou canst not come now, but thou shalt be with me by and by. Peter said, Lord, why cannot I go with thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Jesus said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow thrice till thou hast sworn thrice that thou dost not know me. And as they did eat, Jesus took the bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave to them and said, Take and eat. Then he took some wine in a cup, and when he had thanked God, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he told them that when he was dead, they must meet from time to time and eat the bread and drink the wine in the same way that he had shown them. And as often as they did it, they were to think of him and the death that he died to save men from their sins. Jesus spoke with them for some time. Then a hymn was sung, and they all went from the house and came to the Mount of Olives. And they went to a garden there known as Gethsemane. And Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, and said to them, Sit ye here and watch with me while I go and pray. And he went from them a short way, and knelt down and prayed. And when he thought how soon he was to be put to death for our sins, he was in such grief and pain that the sweat seemed like great drops of blood as it fell to the ground. And God sent an angel to calm him and give him strength. And when he rose from his knees and went back to where his friends were, he found that they slept. And he said to Peter, What? Couldst thou not watch with me one hour? And he went off to pray once more. And when he came back, his friends still slept. And he left them and came back a third time. Then he said, Rise up and let us go, for the worst of my foes is close at hand. Now Judas had been on the watch and knew when Jesus went to the garden, and as it was dark he thought it would be the best time to give him up to the Jews. So he went to the chief priests and told them, and they sent a band of men out with him to take Jesus. Jesus, who knew all things, knew that Judas was near, yet he did not flee. Judas had told the band that he would give them a sign by which they might know which was Jesus. He said, The one I shall kiss is he. Take him and hold him fast. Then he came to Jesus and gave him a kiss. And the men laid their hands on Jesus and took him. His friends who were near him said to him, Lord, shall we fight them with the sword? 
Peter, who had a sword, struck one of the band and cut off his ear. Jesus said to him, Put thy sword back in its sheath. Could I not pray to God to send me a host of angels to fight for me and save me from death? But how then could the words of wise men come true? Then Jesus touched the man's ear and made it well. And he said to those who took him, Have ye come out with swords and staves, as if I were a thief to take me? I sat from day to day and taught you in the church, and you did not harm me. Then Peter, James, and John, and the rest were in great fear and fled from him. The men that took Jesus led him off to the house of the high priest, where the scribes and those who had charge of the church had all met. Peter kept up with the crowd and went in a side door of the house to sit by the fire. And one of the maids of the high priest came to him and said, Thou wast with Jesus. But he said, I know not what you mean. Then he went out on the porch and the cock crew. While there was a maid said to those who stood near, This one was with Jesus. And Peter said once more that he did not know him. And the cock crew once more. Now it chanced that one of the high priest's men was a kinsman of the one whose ear Peter had cut off. And he said to him, Did I not see thee in the garden with him? Peter swore that he was not there, and did not know the man. And Jesus gave him a look as he went by that was like a stab in Peter's heart. For then the cock crew for the third time, and it came to Peter's mind what Jesus had said, Ere the cock crow thrice, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept as if his heart would break. So great was his grief and shame. End of section 37。section 38 of Young Folks Bible by Josephine Pollard。this LibriVox recording is in the public domain。chapter 18 。Christ before Pilate。on the cross。the chief court of the Jews。met in a room near the church and was made up of three score and ten men the high priest and chief priests were there and the scribes and head men of the church and it was for them to say what should be done to those who broke the laws of moses some of whom had to pay fines or to be shut up in jail but if a man was to be put to death they had to ask the chief whom the Caesar of Rome had set to rule in that part of the land, if he would let the deed be done. It was night when the Jews took Jesus, and as soon as it was day, they brought him into the court to have him tried. The high priest said to him, Art thou the Christ? Tell us. Jesus said, If I tell you, ye will not think I speak the truth. Then they all said, Art thou the Son of God? And he said, I am. Then the high priest rent his clothes and said, By his own words we can judge him. What do you say shall be done to him? And they all cried out, Let him be put to death. Then they spit in his face and struck Jesus with the palms of their hands, and they bound him and led him blindfold to Pilate's house, and told Pilate some of the things he had said and done. Pilate said to Jesus, Art thou a king? Jesus said, I am, but my realm is not of this world, else would my men have fought to set me free. Pilate said, I find no fault with this man. And the Jews were more fierce, and cried that his words had made a great stir in all the land, from Galilee to that place. Pilate said, If he came from Galilee, they must take him to Herod, who ruled that part of the land. And Herod was in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was glad, 
for he had heard much of him, and was in hopes to see some great things done by him. But when Herod spoke to Jesus, Jesus said not one word. And the chief priests and scribes stood by and cried out that he claimed to be king of the Jews and the Son of God, and had taught men that they need not keep the laws of Moses or of Rome. These were crimes for which he ought to be put to death. So Herod and his men of war made sport of Jesus, and put on him a robe such as kings wear, for he had said he was a king. And then Herod sent him back to Pilate. Pilate said, I find no fault in this man, nor does Herod, for I sent you to him. He had done not for which he should be put to death. Now it was the rule, when this great feast was held, that one of those who were shut up in jail should be set free. And at this time there was a Jew there whose name was Barabbas, and he had killed some one. Pilate said, Which one shall I set free, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? While Pilate spoke, his wife sent word to him to do no harm to that just man, for she had had a strange dream about him. But the chief priests urged the mob to ask that Barabbas be set free. Pilate said, What then shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They cried out, Hang him! Hang him! When Pilate saw that he could not get them to ask for Jesus, he took some water and washed his hands in full view of the mob and said, I am not to blame for the death of this just man. See ye to it. Then the Jews said, Let his blood be on us and on our children. But Pilate was to blame for Jesus' death, for he gave him up to the Jews that he might please them and keep the place that he had. Now it was the law of the land that a man should be scourged ere he was hung. So Jesus was stripped to the waist, and his hands were bound to a low post in front of him so as to make him stoop. And while he stood in this way, he was struck with rods, or a whip of cords, till the blood burst through the skin. Then Pilate's men of war led him to a room and took off his own robe and put on him one of a red and blue tint. Then they made a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put a reed in his right hand. Then they bowed down to him as if he were a king and mocked at him and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head and smote him with their hands. When Judas saw that Jesus was to be put to death, he was in great grief to think he had brought such a fate on one who had done no wrong. And he took back to the chief priests the sum they had paid him. And he said to them, I have done a great sin to give up to you one who had done no wrong. They said to him, What is that to us? See thou to that. Then Judas threw down the silver and went out and hung himself. Then the men of war took off the gay robe from Jesus and put his own clothes on him and led him out to put him to death. They met a man named Simon and made him bear the cross, and a great crowd of men and women went with them who wept and mourned for Jesus. Jesus told them not to weep for him, but for themselves and their children, because of the woes that were to come on the Jews. They brought him to a place called Calvary, not far from the gates of Jerusalem, and they nailed his feet and hands to the cross, which was then set up in the ground. And all the while Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He meant that they did not know how great was their sin, nor that they had in truth put to death 
the Son of God. With him they hung two thieves, one on his right hand and one on his left. Then they sat down to watch Jesus, who hung for hours on the cross in great pain, ere his death came to him. And they took his robes and gave each one a share, but for his coat they cast lots. And at the top of the cross Pilate had put up these words, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. And the Jews, as they went by, shook their heads at him, and said, If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. And the chief priests and the scribes mocked him, and said, His trust was in God. Let God save him now, if he will have him. One of the thieves spoke to Jesus and said, If thou art the Christ, save thyself and us. But the other said, Dost thou not fear God when thou art so soon to die? It is right that we should die for our sins, but this man has done no wrong. And he said to Jesus, Think of me when thou art on thy throne. Jesus said to him, This day shalt thou be with me where God is. Now there stood near the cross of Jesus his mother and John, the one of the twelve most dear to him. And he bade John take care of his mother, and told her to look on John as her son. And John took her to his own home to take care of her, and give her all that she had need of. From the sixth to the ninth hour, that is, from twelve to three o'clock, the sky was dark in all the land, and Jesus thought that God had turned his face from him. And he cried out with a loud voice, O oh God, O oh God, why hast thou left me? One of the men near thought he was in pain, and took a sponge and dipped it in gall and put it up on a reed to his mouth, so that Jesus might drink. Jesus wet his lips with the drink that was to ease his pain, then spoke once more, bowed his head, and died. Then the veil which hung in the church in front of the ark was torn in two. The earth shook, the rocks were split, the graves gave up their dead, and those who, while they lived, had served the Lord, rose and came out of their graves and went into Jerusalem and were seen there. When those who had kept watch of Jesus as he hung on the cross saw these things that were done, they were in great fear and said, There is no doubt that this man was the Son of God. As night came on, the Jews went to Pilate and begged him to kill Jesus and the two thieves so that they could be put in their graves, for it would not do for them to hang on the cross on the day of rest. The men on guard broke the legs of the thieves to kill them, and thrust a spear into Jesus' side to make sure that he was dead. Now there was near Calvary a garden in which was a tomb in which no one had been laid. It was cut in a rock, and was owned by a rich man, Joseph of Arimathea. He came to Pilate and begged that he might lay Jesus in this grave, and Pilate told him to do so. And Joseph took Jesus down from the cross and wrapped him in the fine linen he had brought, and laid him in the tomb and put a great stone at the door and left him there. The chief priests went to Pilate and said, It has come to our minds that Jesus said that he would rise on the third day. So we pray thee to have men watch the tomb, lest some of his friends come and steal him, and then go and say that he rose from the dead. Pilate said, Ye have your own watchmen. Go and make it as sure as you can. So they went and put a seal of wax on the great tomb and set men to watch by the tomb. But that night God sent down an angel, and he came 
and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His face shone like fire, and his robes were white as snow. And the watchmen shook for fear of him and had no more strength than dead men. End of section 38、section、thirty nine of Young Folks Bible by Josephine Pollard. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter nineteen Jesus leaves the grave, appears to Mary, Stephen stoned, Paul's life and death. On the first day of the week, as soon as it was light, three women, friends of Jesus, came to the tomb with the gums and spice they used to lay out their dead. And they said as they went, Who shall roll the stone away from the door of the tomb? And lo, when they came near, they found that the great stone had been rolled away. And when they went in the tomb, they saw an angel clothed in a long white robe, and they shook with fear. He said to them, Have no fear, ye seek Jesus, who was put to death on the cross. He is not here. Though this is the place where they laid him. Go tell his friends that he has risen from the dead, and bid them go to Galilee, where they shall see him. Two of the women from the tomb, with fear and yet with joy, ran to tell the good news. But Mary Magdalene stood outside the tomb and wept, and as she stooped down and looked in the tomb, She saw two angels in white, the one at the head and the other at the foot of the place where Jesus had lain. And they said to her, Why dost thou weep? She said, Because they have taken my Lord away, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she drew back and saw that Jesus stood near, yet knew not that it was he. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Master. Jesus said, Touch me not, for I have not yet gone up to my father, but go tell the brethren what thou hast seen and heard. And Mary told them that she had seen the Lord and all that he had said to her. And Jesus was seen two or three times on the earth. After his death, and he came and spoke to those who were to teach and preach as he had taught them. But Thomas was not with the rest when the Lord came, and when they told him that they had seen the Lord, he said, I doubt it, but if I shall see in his hands the marks of the nails, and thrust my hand in the wound the spear made in his side, then shall I know that it is he. In eight days, these friends met in a room to talk and pray. Thomas was with them, and the door was shut. Then came Jesus and stood in their midst and said, Peace unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach here and touch my hands, and put thy hand in my side, and doubt no more that I have risen from the dead. When Thomas heard his voice and knew that it was Jesus, he said, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast faith in me. Blessed are they that have not seen me and yet put their trust in me. At the end of five weeks, he met with these friends at Jerusalem. And when he had had a talk with them, he led them out as far as Bethany, and he raised his hands and blessed them. And as he stood thus, he went up in a cloud out of their sight. When the day of Pentecost or harvest feast had come, Peter and the rest of those whom Jesus had taught were all in one place, and all at once, There came the great rush of a strong wind 
that filled the room where they were. And tongues of fire came down on each one of them, and their hearts were filled with a strange power, and they spoke all tongues. And there were men there from all parts of the east, and when they heard these men of Galilee speak in their own tongues of the works of God, they were in amaze. And some said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter stood up and said the men were not drunk, but that this strange gift of speech was one of the signs that God had told the Jews that he would send on the earth. And Peter preached so well to the crowd that not a few left the ranks of sin and gave their hearts to Christ and to good works. From that time, those who had been in the school in which Jesus taught while on earth went out to teach and preach the good news. They gave alms to the poor, healed the sick, and did all the good that they could. One of them, named Stephen, stood up to preach and to tell the Jews what God had done for them, and to try to make them give up their sins. He spoke in plain words and said, The Jews of old put to death those who were sent to tell them that Jesus was to come. And now you have slain the just one himself. When the Jews heard this, they were full of rage and gnashed their teeth at him like wild beasts. But he raised his eyes to the sky and saw a great light there. And he said, I see Jesus on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears so that they could not hear his words, and they brought him out of the town and stoned him. And Stephen knelt down and asked God to forgive them for this sin, and then he died. The men who threw the stones at Stephen took off their cloaks that they might have the free use of their arms and laid them at the feet of a young man named Saul. Now Saul had done much harm to the good cause, and was in a great rage with those who were friends of Jesus and taught his truths. So he went to the high priest at Jerusalem and asked to be sent to Damascus, that if he found friends of Jesus there, he might bind them with cords and bring them back to Jerusalem. And the high priest gave him notes to those who had charge of the churches in Damascus, and he set out for that place. But when he came near the town, there shone round him a great light, and he was in such fear that he fell to the ground. And a voice said to him, Saul, Saul, why dost thou hate me and hunt me down? Saul said, Who art thou, Lord? The voice said, I am Jesus, whom thou dost use so ill. Then Saul shook with fear and said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? The Lord said, Rise and go into the town, and it shall be shown thee what thou must do. And the men who were with him stood dazed and dumb, for they heard the voice, but could see no man. When Saul rose from the earth, he could not see, for the light had made him blind. And those who were with him led him by the hand into Damascus. And for three days he had no sight, and he could not eat nor drink. But God sent Ananias, a good man, to touch his eyes, and his sight and his strength came back, and his heart was changed and there was no man who could preach as Paul did, by which name he was now known. For a while he went with Barnabas. Then he took Silas with him, and they made both friends and foes. The Jews at Philippi found fault with them, beat them, and put them in jail, and bade the jailer keep them safe. So he made their feet fast in the stocks, which were great blocks of wood with holes in them. At midnight 
Paul and Silas prayed, and those in the jail heard them. Then all at once there came a great earthquake, which shook the jail, and the doors flew open, and the chains fell from those who were bound. The jailer woke from his sleep, and when he saw that not a door was shut, he feared he would be put to death if those in the jail had fled. So he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul cried to him with a loud voice, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then the jailer brought a light and came to the cell where Paul and Silas were, and he knelt there and cried out, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That same hour of the night, the jailer took Paul and Silas, and washed their wounds, and brought them food, and his heart was full of joy, for he and all in his house were made Christians and God would forgive their past sins. The next morn, the chief men at Philippi sent word to the jailer to let those men go, for the Jews found they had no right to beat Paul, and they feared the law and begged him to leave the town. Paul went to Athens, the chief town of Greece, which was full of false gods, to whom altars had been built. But there was one altar on which were the words, To the unknown God. Those who built it felt that there was one God of whom they had not been taught, and this altar was for him. Paul taught in Athens both indoors and outdoors. And when the wise men heard that he told of Jesus and that we were all to rise from the dead, they brought him to Mars Hill, where the chief court was held. And they said to him, Tell us now what the good news is, for thou dost speak strange words, and we would like to know what they mean. Paul told them, There was but one true God, and they must serve him, and give up their sins, and put their trust in Jesus, and they would all be saved at the last day. Then Paul went to Corinth, where he spent some time. At the end of some years, he came back to Jerusalem, and the Lord's friends met him and were glad to see his face once more. And he told them where he had been and how God had helped him. And Paul went up to the church, and while he was there, some Jews from Asia saw him and took hold of him and cried out, Men of Israel, help us. This is the man who has taught that we were not to do as Moses told us, nor to come here to pay our vows. And he has brought with him Gentiles, whom it is a crime to let come into our church. Soon all the town was in an uproar, and Paul was brought into the church and the gates that led to the courts were all shut. As they were about to kill him, someone went and told the chief who had charge of a band of Roman troops and dwelt near the great church to guard it. And he and some of his men ran down in the midst of the crowd, who, as soon as they saw them, ceased to beat Paul. The chief took Paul from them, and had him bound with chains, and asked who he was and what he had done. Some cried this, and some that, and no one could tell just what they said. And the chief led him off to his own house to save Paul's life. And the mob brought up the rear and cried out, Away with him! Kill him! The next day the chief let Paul go and sent him to Felix, who ruled in Judea. And here he was shut up in jail, and was there for two years or more. He told them who he was and why he had gone to Jerusalem, and said he had done no wrong that he knew of, 
though some might say it was wrong for him to preach that the dead should rise from their graves at the last day. Felix sent the Jews off and bade the jailer let Paul walk in and out as he chose, and to see all the friends who might call. He was there for two years, and at the end of that time Festus took Felix's place. At last he was sent to Rome to be tried before the Caesar. While on the sea a fierce wind sprang up and beat the ship so that the men could not steer, and they were in great fear lest they should drown. But Paul told them not to fear, for though the ship might be a wreck, there would be no loss of life. At the end of two weeks the ship struck the isle of Malta, and the men swam to the shore on bits of boards. Paul stayed here for three months and then went to Rome, where he dwelt for two years or more, and taught men to trust in the Lord and to do right. We are not told when or how he died. End of section 39、section、40 of Young Folk's Bible by Josephine Pollard. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 20 What John Saw While on the Isle of Patmos, The Great White Throne, The Land of Light. John wrote the last book in the New Testament. It is called Revelation, and that means that it tells what no one else but John knew. John was sent to the lone isle of Patmos by one of the bad emperors of Rome who would not let him preach or teach the truths that Christ taught. While he was at Patmos, Jesus came to him in a dream and showed him all the things that he wrote of in this book. John says, I heard a great voice like a trumpet. And as I turned to see who it was that spoke to me, I saw Jesus clothed in a robe that fell to his feet and was held at the waist by a belt of gold. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet like one dead. And he laid his right hand on me and said, Fear not, I am he who died on the cross, but who now lives to die no more. Jesus told John to write down all that he saw and to send it to the churches for which it was meant. Then John saw a door open in the sky, and a voice said to him, Come up here, and I will show thee what will take place in the time to come. And he heard the angels sing songs of praise to Jesus, whom they called the Lamb that was slain. And John was shown. Strange things that were to teach him what the friends of Christ would have to put up with till the end of the world. And he was shown, too, how the Lord would save them from their foes, so that at last no one could hurt or harm them. Then John saw a great white throne in heaven, and Jesus sat on it. And the dead rose from their graves and came and stood near the throne to be judged. All the things that they had done while on the earth were put down in the books out of which they were judged. And if their names were not in the book of life, they were cast into the lake of fire. When this great day was past, John saw new skies and a new earth. For the old earth and skies had been burnt up. And he saw the new Jerusalem come down from the skies and heard a voice say that God would come and live with men. Round the new Jerusalem, which was built of gold, was a high wall with twelve gates, three on each side. At each gate was an angel to guard it. In the walls were all kinds of rich and rare gems, and its twelve gates were made of pearls. There was no need of the sun or the moon 
for God was there, and Jesus, and they made it light. And those whom Jesus had saved, Jews and Gentiles, rich and poor, were to come and live in it. And the gates should not be shut, for there will be no night there. And none but those whose names are in the book of life shall go into it. And John saw a pure river called the water of life. On each side of it grew the tree of life that bore twelve kinds of fruit, which were ripe each month. And those who dwell in that land of light and eat the fruits of the tree of life and drink of the water of life shall see the Lord's face and be with him and serve him. He will wipe all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, nor grief, nor pain. Jesus said to John, Blessed are they who keep God's laws and do his will, that they may pass through the gates to his bright home on high. The End End of Young Folk's Bible by Josephine Pollard End of Section 40